This episode of The Modern Rogue brought to you by Squarespace. Go to squarespace.com slash rogue and get 10% off your first purchase. Also a free trial. You might, you should have mentioned the free trial. You are so generous. It's, it's not me, it's them. It's them who is generous. You told, I just, you told me it was you. No, you no, let no, me no, think no, it was I'm you. Just the messenger. Don't praise the messenger. Is, wait, is that the? All right, so three years ago, <laughs> I stood here in between you guys yep. and showed you Whiskey. At the time, it was the most amazing whiskey vault we had ever seen. Oh, yeah. Not gonna lie, I don't want to take anything away from you. Seems like there's a little bit less whiskey and a lot of office equipment I've in here. I've been drinking a lot. <laughs> <laughs> now what happened was that whiskey, which at the time had like 400, 500 ish models yeah. of unique bottlings. Largely bought by you guys, oftentimes bought by fans. And then and donated, sent to you. yeah. yeah. No, it got so big, it wouldn't fit in here anymore. I remember <laughs> how big your old office is, and I know, I know in my mind that your old office is the new vault. But you and haven't been there yet. We, can we go to the new vault? Yeah, well, hang on. I'm going to tell you what's in here real quick. You okay, ready? go ahead. Go ahead. So we moved our desks up here. Yeah. So these desks used to be in my office. Yep. Now, Zach, the vice chancellor of Wizard Academy, and I, we work in here, desks and printers and off. These bottles now, right behind you, are donated bottles. That is, at five videos a week, we shoot and review about nine whiskeys a week. So you can see how far behind we are. And uh, outside in the hallway, we'll walk past a box of about another 30 that I haven't added into here in inventory yet. I mean, at this point, you guys are going to exponentially cover the planet in whiskeys. That's the goal. <laughs> Living the dream, really. <laughs> then we got our whiskey books and things, and then these are simply just duplicates and things that need to be inventoried for the vault. And this is my actual private personal collection. These are actually mine I bought with my own money, not part of the vault. Okay. And Zach and I keep them in here, and when we're ready for a drink, we drink from my collection, not from the school collection. That's fascinating. Also, top notes of confefe. <laughs> yeah, right? This is one of my favorites. Look at all the foraging on the forest floor. Chocolate bourbons. <laughs> uh, cornography. <laughs> yeah. Pirate ship in a storm. These are good ones. That's the uh, Scotch Malt Whiskey Society. But we uh, reached out to what we call the Magnificent Bastards, the people who have built the entire channel. Sure. We said, hey, we need to build a new vault. Do you guys want to be involved? And they all stepped in because we're a nonprofit. Right. And they donated money to build the shelving, the lighting, all of the infrastructure, I'm just gonna the take camera some notes equipment. Here. Come on. Yeah, right? <laughs> so and their names <laughs> are on all the shelves, and we're going to see them. <laughs> and Zach, our vice chancellor, is a woodworker built the feature wall that we're still working on what we're gonna put and you're gonna see that too. All right, all right, let's let's spare everyone. What everybody wants to know is how many bottles did this used to be when it was awesome? It was around five to eight hundred. How many bottles are we about to see? Over two thousand. <laughs> Last time I saw your office, there was a big old window. It said toad and ostrich. You were able to open up the window yeah, from the outside and in, crawl yeah. in. Not yeah. that I ever did that. Totally didn't do that, yeah. <laughs> you ready? Yes. Wait, wait. Oh, oh. That's good security procedure. Deviant it's like would entering be proud. my pin number on is this, an ATM Is this a machine. real bank vault? It is a real bank vault Oh door. my god! Yeah, go on in. Brian, prepare oh. to be amazed. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, okay, so we are surrounded by 2,000 bottles. Arranged how and, and of, what, uh, of so, what rarity? So here's the thing. The, uh, reasonably accessible is out and about. Yeah. Right? So starting over here, bourbons are these two shelves. Okay. When you get to the top, you're at New Make, Unaged Spirits, and Corn Whiskey. Uh, hold on real quick. Uh, I know this is a test for me. Bourbons are, we think of Kentucky, we think of American made, we think of distilled new in new, new barrels. Plus corn. That's right. Uh, so okay. On. And then the next thing you said? Corn whiskey. Uh, that would be more like your moonshines. No, the... no, corn whiskey is literally like corn, dominant grain, aged in, or corn aged in used or uncharred oak barrels and so on. Okay. And then unaged spirits at the very top. Okay, got Just it. And that, that that is what, what I would think of as moonshine. Yeah, yeah but even though that's not the right, yeah. Then American whiskey that has no real category. And I actually recognize many of these as local. Oh, yeah. We yeah, got uh, yeah, Central yeah. Texas, yeah. yeah. All right. Then you've got Canadian and independent bottled scotch. Uh, so 
Canadian. If there's one thing I remember from the class is that Canadians have that weird double distilled law. They've got all kinds of variations of things going on. Okay. Anytime you find a hard rule in Canadian whiskey, you find it broken by one of the Canadian distillers. But in general, a Canadian whiskey is meant to be more pleasant and smooth the way a vodka would be. Well, they tend to be more accessible and drinkable, but that rule is being broken by independent craft guys all the time. Those crafty yes, Canadians. Crafty bastards. So, rye whiskey. The only thing I think of with rye is the taste and smell of, of dillweed. Rye, rye, Miss American pie. Uh, I, whiskey I'm, I'm and unfamiliar. Rye. I've never heard that song. Yeah. <laughs> whiskey from all over the world that's not big enough to have its own category. Well, that's so, interesting. Uh, so, so. India, uh, Sweden, Belgium, Australia, uh, Taiwan. These are the belters. Yeah. And then uh, down here, American malt whiskey. Sorry, is that not, not Scotch I thought, malt? Yeah, American malt. It's barley instead of corn. Uh, walk me through the difference. At some point, we learned that America's official distilled spirit bourbon. is bourbon. Right. How? Uh, this is malt, so it's made with barley instead of corn. Got it. But it doesn't necessarily abide by the Scottish rules of things. Yeah. But it's usually a hundred percent. These guys all have tribal tattoos. Yeah, they so totally they're totally different. Do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they all ride to work on pixie. <laughs> Fixed gear and bicycles. <laughs> <laughs> Eventually, we're going to put quintessential whiskeys from every category on this. This is just a test run to see what the bottles look like on the shelf. So, so the names the on names. here don't have any input on what no, whiskey is put on really here. Okay. And there may be some ball busting involved in what whiskey we put next to what name. Uh, by the way, uh, quick side note, I want you to note this name. Patrick Cohn is the only person who's ever walked into the Patreon.com corporate offices and the entire building stood up and gave him a standing ovation. Yeah. He supported so many independent projects. He's yes, amazing. He, he was your main guy before he was He's ours. He's still our main guy. Uh, Screw you. He's ours now. <laughs> we get Patrick. Yeah. yeah. Uh, over here, Irish whiskey. Irish is, how, how do you Irish define? It's made in Ireland. But it's is a, there a flavor? I, I know it's not as smoky as, as Scottish no, in general. There are exceptions to that rule with Conmara, but typically it is more uh, like a lighter, butterscotch friendly, approachable spirit. Would, would it be unfair to say more drinkable? Yeah. Whatever that I word means so, to you. We, we've talked about this like for years when I was touring on the, on, the, on the road, uh, I, I understood for every busy airport, there was two minutes of bliss waiting me on the other side of saying double Jameson oh, meat. Yeah. You know, I it's like it's like it. that's that's what it meant to me. Yeah. I still love it. And that's that's the accessible budget blend of grain and pot still, mm -hmm. but still I love it. Uh, and then blended scotches and independent bottled releases. So this is no longer geographic based. No, it's this Scottish. is flavor that's profiles. All okay. But it's blended and malt blends and grain blends and so on. And we've talked about in the past, uh, blends are basically, you know what the target is you're trying to hit and you know you just need to buy a few barrels of this, a few barrels of that, yeah. too much of this, too little of that, and the then flavor you end up hitting it. Things. Yeah. All right, so right, over here we have actual single malt scotch in these two walls broken down by region. So Island, Isla, and Campbelltown. And then over here, Speyside Highland and Islands, roughly. Am I right in understanding that single malt scotch is sort of an evil Knievel proposition where it's like, we got this, we're gonna see it all the way through to the end. Yeah. It'll either hit or not. Absolutely. Whereas a blend is gonna be pretty safe. It's like, ooh, let's let's correct course yeah, by adding still more. An art for it, but you can you can accommodate things. Sure. Whereas this is luckily, these guys mostly have like a hundred plus years in the in the bag. They know what they're making now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. But when they started, who knows? At the very, very top, we've hidden our Japanese whiskey selection. Which, explain to me again why Japanese whiskey suddenly became so popular because, overnight. Uh, a very famous whiskey personality made them whiskey of the year. And all of a sudden, it went from somebody that whiskey people knew was good somebody that the world was like, oh, we got to get that Japanese whiskey. Oh, and that it's important to bring that up because during the class, you talk about how the price of whiskey is not a reflection of the quality, but only the rarity right, of just it. like diamonds, just rarity. If you can't get it, whether because it's actually rare or because you can't get it in your area, it's going to be more expensive. When I took your sommelier class, that was the most punk rock experience I'd ever have. You got us all into the whiskey vault. You took a bunch of Dixie oh, no. cups. Oh, no. You poured you a bunch of little... I'm sorry, You're it's so it. good. No. We all had Dixie cups. He's like, hey, let's do a shot. Boom, we did a shot. We're like, all right, let's get it started. Four hours later, he reveals 
that that shot in a Dixie cup was the most expensive whiskey in the vault. Yeah. He had wasted it on us to prove a point that story and presentation mattered. That's it was true. so punk rock, dude. That's true, don't tell anyone. Don't tell anyone. <laughs> All right, right here, we've got a locked cabinet of, with the key, interestingly enough, sitting in it, uh, of things that if it, they run out, it's going to be really hard to replace. It doesn't necessarily mean expensive. Right. It just means, and it, although it often is, but it just means if we run out of that bottle, the odds of getting another one are gonna be pretty slim. This is the place where if somebody's just, you know, looking around, you wanna communicate, hey buddy, if you Hands just off. want some whiskey, there's plenty here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's nothing necessarily special about these outside of the pain in the ass it'll cause when I have to replace them. I'll tell you what's gonna happen. All right. You sit down. Yes. I'm gonna pour you a glass of whiskey that we can have together, I like right? everything about what right. I'm hearing. Brian, I'm gonna pour for you my all-time favorite whiskey in the world. Oh my God. This bottle doesn't exist anymore because the new guy who took over blending for them changed the recipe. So none of this, if you find a bottle of this, it's none of it exists on the planet anymore to be made again. You found one of the only remaining bottles. Longmorn 16, specifically the brown and green label, never to be made again. This is how uncultured I am. I'm thinking, oh, you have old Coke before Coke <laughs> Classic. <laughs> That's true. This is Longhorn 16 from the Speyside region in Scotland. Oh, wow. Now this is a beautiful thing. Sriracha. Yeah, subtle black so pepper, smooth. honeysuckle, so pretty. Well, and 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 light. Um, uh, I suppose I I don't usually expect that from a whiskey. Is is that it, it felt like candy on its way in and in the aftertaste. Yeah, but then with a little zing of black pepper, about three fourths of the way through. You talked in the class how when people say things like "oh, black pepper," I mm -hmm. detect this, that, and the other. The words themselves don't really matter so no. much as they are. They're just markers for your mind to later understand. Because as you yes. were saying, and walk me past this again, uh, the nose, the taste, uh, that's all uh, touching the amygdala. Yeah, well, it's in the right brain, which is pattern recognition, but has no language or reality or anything like that all on its own. It has to work with both sides to combine those things together. Right. So uh, there's two levels of communicating that level of sensory from your nose. And there's, there's a level at which you can recognize it. And then there's a level at which you can communicate it to others. Right, so it's important that you can recognize that your own patterns. Right. But it's also important that you're able to say what you mean and someone else understand the experience you're trying to describe. So for me, the smell of a can of Sterno mm -hmm. always takes me back to the first month of seventh grade at West Memorial Junior High. Done. Um, so that's your marker. Right, correct. But how would you explain that to me without any personal reference? I would That's say, the second marker. Right, then I would have to reduce it and say it smells sterile and slightly hostile mixed with the sweat of pubescence and you know, whatever, yeah, whatever that is. Yeah, you're looking for ex shared experience. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And so what we try to teach at the school is that second level. It, and we also teach the first one, which is learn to recognize your own markers. Right. But the important part of being a whiskey sommelier is providing that journey to other people. And so you have to know how to communicate what you are thinking to an accessible level. So how do you respond to, because uh, we still encounter every so often somebody who's like, whiskey, just drink it, dirt. You know, the like, answer is yes. I mean, the, exactly. Of all the people to level that accusation against, the whiskey tribe are not the ones. No, we don't give <laughs> a Yeah, exactly. Well, no, even at the school, I always say, like, my first sip of whiskey is not an, an appreciative sip. It's just a sip. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, it's just whiskey, drink it. Yeah. Well, it's and, good. and the mantra of good whiskey is whiskey you like to drink. I think it's fairly simple yes. and I would think universal, apparently controversial for some reason. Turns out. <sighs> okay. Yeah. If people want to be here in person or virtually, what is the fastest way for them to worm themselves into your heart <laughs> and somehow end up having the experience I'm having right now? If you want to be able to take other people on this kind of journey, then go to whiskeymarketing.org. Okay. Uh, if you want to learn the things that we teach, the concepts, but don't necessarily have to do with whiskey, go to wizardacademy.org. Okay. If you want to just come and take a tour of this room and have a small training session on whiskey, go to Austin Whiskey Vault.
Done. Got it. Dude, done and done. Thank you so much, man. Look Cheers. Thank you. You guys have grown so much. Ryan, I was on our website like just a few minutes ago. I know you wouldn't get off of it. I said, Jason, get off that website. Get out of my dreams. Get into my car is what I said. Oh, Billy Ocean? <laughs> no. You're no. actually Billy Ocean. No, I'm Brian Brushwood. I was telling you to get off of my Squarespace. Get into this ad. Okay, well, I was doing some research and I realized just how beautiful and easy and simple our website actually is. Yeah. It's actually pretty good looking. I can't take credit for it. I didn't do any of it. I was about to say, like, it sounds to me like you're trying to say that if you have a message to give the world, you want to make it bold and beautiful with award-winning designs, sounds to me like you're saying people should use Squarespace. Yes, they've got e-commerce, it is scalable, 24-7, 365 day support. It's really everything you want. But somewhere out there, somebody's saying like, yeah, but how do I also support the modern rogue? It's me, guy who loves the modern rogue, but is also weirdly jaded. Yeah, uh, you should be asking yourself that Classic question as well. Classic character. <laughs> Squarespace.com slash rogue. That helps you support the show. You get 10% off and a free trial. We should be drinking bourbon if we're doing yeah. that. Or moonshine. Really. Yeah.